From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. I am Nick Barris. It's a Monday. Happy President's Day to you. Uh, I know uh, many of our students are out of school this morning. Uh, some of us are still working. Uh, a lot of the offices out there are closed. And so sit back, enjoy the program, join in the conversation if you'd like this morning. Lots to talk about, about politics. And uh, we had this show scheduled last week to come on this Monday to talk about what happened after the Republican debate on Saturday, which if you watched, um, for me, it was entertaining. Okay, gosh, those guys go after each other. But anyway, well, we were going to talk about that, where we go in South Carolina, both for the Democrats and the Republicans. And, of course, then the big story over the weekend, the, uh, the sudden death of uh, Supreme Court uh, Justice Antonin Scalia and, and what that means now on a lot of fronts uh, for the Supreme Court, uh, who his replacement will be, and when that replacement will take place current administration, you know, the debate about whether waiting until the new president's elected. We'll get into all that, and I invite you to join in the conversation. Tell me what you think with regard to the uh, the Supreme Court issue, which is now um, a big part of this equation. Uh, with us this morning to uh, to talk about it, take your phone calls, and give us his always, I think, astute observations. As Kent Seiler with MTSU, political Thanks science professor. Nice to have you on this morning, Thanks sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always good to have you. You braved the, the rain, and it was nice. It and wasn't too bad. You? you know, I got up uh, from Murfreesboro pretty quickly today. So he's, he's my favorite kind of guest for a lot of reasons, <laughs> one of which he knows, well, you know, it might be slick. I'll leave a little bit early. And he got here a little bit early, which yeah. thank you very much <laughs> for that. To. I really appreciate it. Well, um, you know, let's see uh, where we can start. And we'll open up the phone lines as we go, 737-7587. Um, the debates have been very interesting, they have been. especially on the Republican side to me. And I, I've seen portions of both Democrat and Republican right. ones. The ones on Saturday, what, what was your takeaway on Saturday? Uh, it, as you mentioned, it was entertaining, wow. but some there was a cringe factor too. I mean, it, it was as close to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat as as I've seen in a political debate, especially at the presidential level. So, yeah. uh, you know, the word liar was used multiple times, and <laughs> uh, I think Donald Trump attacked the last Republican president over and over again. It, it's it, again, <laughs> I, I've said before that if this election cycle uh, were a movie, mm -hmm. uh, none of us would go see it because we would think it was too unrealistic and yeah. it just keeps going. Yeah, It is. A, they just keep upping the ante. It's, 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 they, they genuinely now seem to not like each other, for real. I yeah. mean, for a while there, there was that bromance, supposedly, between Cruz and Trump. That, of course, long gone. Yeah, that's over. And, uh, but, I mean, and you could just tell, I, I think Jeb Bush, I mean, really is getting tired of Trump attacking his family. And, yeah. of course, his brother's coming out to campaign for him now in South Carolina. But I just get the sense he, he has a real distaste for, trust, uh, for Trump. Meaning that when this is all said and done, however this plays out, these guys aren't going to be exchanging Christmas cards ever. I don't think so. Yeah, South Carolina you know? kind of breeds that type of combat and because South Carolina is an incredibly important primary. Yeah. And so everyone is fighting as hard as they can fight. All right, the big new development, and this is where I'm going to want some of our viewers maybe to weigh in as well, again, was the death of uh, Antonin Scalia, um, the Supreme Court Justice, dead at the age of 79. Kind of a surprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, he had, it appears as though uh, a heart situation, and uh, they say cause of death was natural cause. He may have died of a, a heart attack. Um, but uh, no one saw this. It wasn't like he had uh, a long sustained illness where we were waiting. Sure. So it surprised a lot of folks. This is going to be, you think, a key now issue added to the mix for all the politicians? Yeah, I guess just when you thought this presidential race couldn't take another uh, unexpected twist or turn, it has. And you're going to see uh, President Obama very quickly um, nominate someone. Mm -hmm. uh, the Republican Senate has said they're not going to confirm him, that he should wait. So you're going to see a real pitched battle here, uh, really for the hearts and minds of, of voters. And the president is going to be trying to explain why it is his duty to do it. He will be trying to make the Republicans in the Senate look obstructionist. Uh, it, it will be really, it'd be, it'll be decided really by public pressure, yeah. by public opinion. It's going to be so interesting. I want to delve more into that and get your thoughts because, I mean, it is interesting when you look at the framework of this. You have a Democratic president in an election year. Right. And you have the most conservative member, I would say, of the Supreme Court sure. who dies. And, and it is a blow to conservatives. They would think it now kind of evens out. Whoever this replacement is will be very crucial, I think. All right? Even though I think some other justices are getting close to the end as well. But anyway, 
So you have that going on, uh, and, and it doesn't surprise me one way or another some of these candidates now during the debate were saying, you know, well, you know, they should wait, and it, which I find personally absurd, whether this was a Democrat or Republican president, to say he should just sit for the rest of his year and not nominate is absurd by any stretch of the imagination. I, I liked that at the beginning of the debate, the first question that went to Donald Trump, where it could have gone to any one of them, if you were president, in, what, would in, you do? what would you do? And come on. There's not a single person up there, and if they say otherwise, they're not being truthful. They would say, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I would just pass it on. The president, his constitutional duty is to nominate. Now, I'm not saying the Senate needs to confirm, but if they're simply not confirming because they just want to wait, I think that's wrong. I think they need to look at the candidate. If it's not someone that they approve of, fine, don't pass it on. But if they're just saying, well, it's not right, I mean, it's not like the president's leaving office right next week. Sure. He it, still has almost a year, right? Yeah, he does. Well, Jim, it's absurd yeah. to say, oh, just don't do anything. Wait for the next president. That, to me, is absurd. If you disagree, please call, okay? Because I just think that's incredibly foolish. Well, that statement that's, is just that, like, that, come on. That, the, that's the debate the public's going to have. Well, it's silly. The, the, it's silly. the president will lay out his best case, the Senate will lay out their right. best case and and people will decide and the way they will decide is really the pressure that they will put on the senators or the pressure they'll put on the president i don't like so the supreme court um, sitting there with eight justices for over a year or for just about sure. a year i mean that doesn't make sense to me but again i'm not saying that that the president should you know nominate someone and just not automatically be confirmed but i'm sure. just saying it's to me an absurd argument and it's politics you know to it, say it, that he should just yeah. sit on his hands and do nothing and of course he's already said he will now here's the trick politically then and i think it's great what you've said then the pressure that will come about all right now if you're the president now and i'm sitting there in his shoes i mean he may have a candidate that he really wanted but maybe now he's realizing in this climate he needs to put a candidate out there that maybe is not perfect for democrats or republicans it's just right in the middle mm -hmm. and 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 maybe it's one that that both sides could live with okay yeah. and and if he does that and they still just out of you know well we're just not going to do it then i think that could really hurt the Republican Senate and Republicans in general. Now, if he goes with some liberal, you know, judge, and you know, they they say, hey, this is not someone we want, then maybe they'll look strong standing up to him. What do you think? I, mean, I, I, be, I think you're exactly right. Back. Yeah, we're we're in really a debate of philosophies yeah. and and constitutional issues. Once there's a nominee in place, suddenly a lot of the argument becomes about that nominee. Right. Uh, so we get out of these hypothetical uh, mm -hmm. academic debates and get into, you know, do you like him or her? Do you think they would make a good justice? There are some uh, potential nominees that have flown through uh, confirmation, um, I think 198 to nothing, you know, not too long yeah. ago. So th there's going to be some, uh, you know, the nominee, like you said, is going to play a huge role here. That's where I don't like when they're saying right now, the president shouldn't, if he does, we're just going to vote it down. I mean, anyone who says that to me has lost all my respect. My point is, okay, the president's going to nominate. It's his constitutional duty. And then look at it. Now, if it's someone you don't like, that's fine. I can right. live with that if you vote it down. But just to say, well, we just want to wait for the next president to do this, I think that's flat wrong. Yeah. And it bothers me. I think they just need to look at who. And again, they may not, they may not, and isn't it true now? The, the Senate, of course, is Republican. And whoever the president nominates is going to need to get some Republican votes. Yes. Obviously, to, to make it. it through. And, and so he's up against it. And he's a lame duck. What can mm -hmm. he promise a Republican in exchange sure. for their vote? And things like this. I mean, do you think he has a shot? I do, but it's it's going to be a campaign. I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to have a presidential campaign going on. This is going to be a campaign and a battle like we really haven't seen in a while. And yeah. you, you've in, in the Republican primary politics too. Uh, you know, a lot of Republican primary voters feel that they're under attack, mm -hmm. and Justice Scalia has been one of those reliable conservative voices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that ups the ante greatly with the Republican primary voters, uh, and, and it's why we heard a lot of what we heard with the debate the other night. Yeah, so. uh, hypothetically, would it have been much different if, say, it had been Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who is uh, perhaps the most liberal member of the court, had she left the Supreme Court? Would we be having a different debate, or would we be hearing the same thing from the candidates? I think you'd hear a lot of the same thing, but I don't think you would, the, the earnest nature of it would be less, because they, again, yeah. we've had a 5-4 court, this could be the vote that tips the court one way or the other, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, it's extremely uh, yeah. important to a lot of voters. Oh, I agree, and I think you're right um, with uh, Scalia, one of the more conservative 
members over all the years leaving True. And, and the way this plays. It's just fascinating. What do you think should be done? I mean, if you really think that the president should just not nominate and we just wait for the next, and I don't know why. We don't know who's the next president going to be. Okay, right. I mean, it could be a Republican or it could end up being Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. Right, you could. And get, they're going to be yeah. nominating someone yeah. then and uh, there'll be a battle then anyway, exactly. right? Exactly. You could so. get someone um, even more, more, you know, more to the left. To the left. Yeah. Interesting dynamic, man. It, it keeps getting more interesting. We'll take a break. When we come back, if you're on hold, Greg and others stay there. The line's open, 737-7587. What do you think, uh, what you hear so far as we go, the South Carolina primary coming up, and, and your take on this whole thing with the Supreme Court, uh, which is a big issue. It we'll, is. We'll take it's a break huge. right after this. We'll be right back.